Hey, and welcome. So if you're a developer, you already know AI coding assistants are, well, they're kind of a game changer. They write boilerplate for us, they suggest fixes, and they just speed up our workflow in ways that honestly feel like magic. They're an amazing partner to have. But what happens when that magic goes a little haywire? What happens when your trusted AI partner looks you dead in the eye and gives you code that seems perfect, but is just flat out wrong? Well, that's where we enter the strange world of AI hallucinations. And trust me, it's something you need to understand. Now, I know the term hallucination sounds super dramatic, right? But it's actually the perfect word for this bizarre little quirk. So let's just dive in and break down what it really means for us in our code. Okay, so here's the core idea. A hallucination is when an AI gives you an answer with all the confidence in the world, and that answer seems totally reasonable, but it's factually incorrect. The best analogy I've heard is to picture someone trying to bluff their way through a conversation. They sound super convincing, but there's just nothing there. And it's really important we get this straight. A hallucination isn't just a bug or some random error that makes your app crash. And the AI isn't trying to fool you. It's not lying on purpose. It's actually a side effect of how these models work. They're just incredibly good at matching patterns. And that plausibility, that's the real kicker. That's what makes them so tough to spot. So the big question is why? Why does this even happen? Well, if we wanna spot these ghosts in the machine, we gotta understand where they come from. And it all boils down to how these models think. In fact, for you more senior engineers out there, when you're tweaking the API, you can play with settings like temperature to make the output more creative, which, yeah, can make hallucinations even more likely. The easiest way to think about a large language model is as the world's smartest, most powerful autocomplete. I mean, it's scanned billions of lines of code. So when you prompt it, it's not really reasoning like a human. It's looking at the sequence of words, or tokens, you gave it and it's making a statistical bet on what the most likely next token should be, all based on the patterns it's seen before. So when the model hits a point where it doesn't have a solid factual answer, it doesn't just stop, it keeps the pattern going. And this is how it ends up inventing a brand new API method that sounds like it should be real, or it gets confused and mixes up the syntax from two libraries that look kind of similar. It's just trying to finish the sentence in the most probable sounding way. And here's another huge factor you have to remember, the knowledge cutoff date. Every model was trained on data up to a specific point in time. So if you ask it about a cool new feature in React 19, but its training only went up to React 18, it literally has no idea what you're talking about. So what does it do? It falls back on what it knows, on older patterns, and you got it, it hallucinates an answer that seems plausible. Okay, theory is one thing, but seeing these things in action is where it really clicks. So let's look at a few classic examples that you've probably already run into, or you will very, very soon. Let's start with something simple, something we do a hundred times a day, importing a function. This is a classic trap where a hallucination can look incredibly real. Just look at that, import from debounce from React. I mean, that looks 100% legit, right? So many frameworks bundle common utilities these days, it just feels right, but it's totally wrong. The debounce function is not part of the main React library. The AI just confidently made up an import that's gonna break your code the second you run it. All right, for this next one, the AI gets even more creative. It doesn't just mess up an import, it invents an entire method that feels like it absolutely should be real. Okay, anyone who's worked with data in Python and pandas is looking at df.removeoutliers and thinking, yes, please. It's logical, it's useful, and the name fits the pandas library perfectly. There's just one tiny problem. It's a ghost. It's a total phantom. It doesn't exist. The model had a great idea for a function, but it's pure fiction. Now this last example, this one might be the most dangerous of all, because the mistake is so small, so subtle, it's not some big obvious error, it's just one little line hidden in a config file. At a quick glance, this package.json file looks fine. Everything seems standard, except for that one line, browser true. That key isn't a valid property at the top level of the file. It's such a tiny mistake, but it's the kind of thing that can cause these super frustrating bugs that take you hours to hunt down, all because the AI gave you something that was 95% correct. Okay, so we've seen the problem. It's real, it's sneaky, and it can be a headache. But now we get to the good part, the empowering part. How do we, as developers, actually deal with this? Well, it all comes down to a simple shift in how we think. So let's put that new mindset to the test. 
Right now, imagine an AI suggests a brand new API method you've never seen before. What is your immediate gut reaction next step? Do you just trust it, pop it in the code, and figure you'll fix any bugs later? Do you stop what you're doing and check the official documentation first? Or do you just ask the AI for a few more options and kind of hope one of them works? Take a second, think it over. The answer, the only answer, is to verify, always. You have to check the official docs or look for your own code base. Just blindly trying other suggestions or trusting the AI to get it right is a recipe for a very bad day. That independent verification, that's the only professional way to do it. And this right here, this quote, is the golden rule. If you take away only one thing from this, let it be this. Whether you're a junior dev or a senior architect, you have to treat every single line of AI-generated code as a suggestion to be reviewed, not a final command to be followed. This way of thinking doesn't just save you from bugs, it forces you to understand the code better, which makes you a better developer, period. Now, while hallucinations are a huge topic, it's worth remembering that they're just one of a few limitations these amazing tools have. So let's just quickly touch on a couple of others you should know about. Just be aware, an AI will often agree with you even if you're wrong, just to keep the pattern of the conversation going. They also, funnily enough, struggle with things that computers are supposed to be amazing at, like generating truly random numbers or counting things precisely in a long document. Knowing these weak spots just helps you use the tool smarter. But let's be absolutely crystal clear here. After all this talk about errors and weird limitations, we have to remember, these tools are still revolutionary. They are incredible for brainstorming, writing boilerplate, and helping us solve problems. The key isn't to be afraid of them, it's just to use them wisely. So I'll just leave you with this final thought. Knowing that your AI partner can be confidently wrong isn't a weakness in the tool, it's an opportunity for you. It's an opportunity to sharpen your own critical thinking, to get better at reading documentation, and to truly own every line of code you write. The ghost in the machine, it just forces all of us to become better masters of our craft.